Hello. In the last hour, Sadiq Khan has met with the family of a teenager shot dead over the bank holiday weekend. Rahim Barton died near his home in Southwark on Saturday. Elsewhere, there were a further four shootings, two stabbings and an acid attack. Well, despite the surge in violence, London's mayor has ruled out deploying the army to free up more police officers for our streets. But as our correspondent Simon Harris reports, he's facing increased pressure to act. Most murder scenes are marked by flowers, but at the spot Raheem Barton was shot dead, there are buckets and brushes where his mother scrubbed his blood from the pavement. Raheem was no stranger to gang violence. Two years ago, he was stabbed and robbed. Just a week ago, he was given a nighttime curfew by a court after being arrested for carrying a weapon. His mum, Pratanya, says he convinced her he was willing to change and only went outside on Saturday for some fresh air before obeying his curfew. He was on that change. Naturally, he realised that, you know what, mum, I'm going to stop it. Just try my best to do, like, you know, try your way and see if it could work then. And just see if they can acknowledge that he's on a different path. But if they come to him, he has to defend himself, he said, mummy. Local people say the Brandon estate where Raheem died can be violent and frightening, especially at night. There's something you keep hearing whenever someone is stabbed to death or shot dead. Where are the police? We never see any police officers until after someone has died. And, as, like, and it's no different here. Geraldine and Letitia knew Raheem well. One of them was a neighbour, the other a second cousin. They were too scared to give us their second names. Downing Street is just like half an hour from here. They've got so much police protecting them and there is no police in the black community. They know that this area is target area. They need to more visit and make sure everybody's safe. When the terror alert in London was raised last year, soldiers replaced police guarding high-profile buildings. That meant more police officers could patrol the streets. Why don't you do that with knife crime? get the police away from guarding buildings. Well, with the violent crime task force that begun recently as a consequence of City Hall investment, we have been moving police assets uh, around and the commission does that all the time. It's an operational decision. Just specifically, getting the troops to take over the job of some police officers. Have you thought about that? Well, you'll be aware that when it comes to terrorism, those are operational decisions taken by uh, those in positions of authority in relation to operational matters. It happens very exceptionally. We don't want ar the army on the streets of uh, London. Tonight, the mayor went to Kennington to talk to Raheem Barton's family as the list of young people murdered on London streets grows longer. Simon Harris, ITV News, Kennington. In the last 24 hours, a further six people have been stabbed in London, including four teenagers. All have survived, but after another weekend of violence, there's now an urgent inquiry into what police are doing to keep Londoners safe. The London Assembly will examine whether the mayor's strategy and police response are adequate. Our political correspondent Simon Harris has more. My mum needs me alive. There was the ad campaign urging young Londoners not to carry knives. London needs me alive. London needs me alive. There was the launch of the mayor's official knife crime strategy and a promise to put more police into violent crime hotspots. Yet, for all these high-profile initiatives, the killings have continued. Now, politicians on the London Assembly have told the Mayor and the Met to get a grip. They absolutely do need to get a grip. Ultimately, we have a crisis in violent crime in London. The Mayor is elected to keep Londoners safe, the Met are there to keep us safe, and at the moment, they're not doing that. I share the uh, anger and concern uh, that, that you have. Uh, Last month, the mayor was summoned to appear before the London Assembly. Such was the concern at the rising death toll. Today, the Assembly announced what it called an urgent investigation into the crisis. The mayor's response was to again blame government cuts and the effect they're having on police numbers. But his spokesperson insisted he is doing all he can to compensate for the failure of ministers. Sadiq Khan argues the violence isn't confined to London and the government must come up with a nationwide response. In the Commons, the Prime Minister restated her view on the link between crime and funding. As I have always said, and indeed as the Shadow Policing Minister has said, there is no direct link between the number of police officers and the issue and crime and the, and, uh, the funding. The London Assembly says its investigation will pose three crucial questions about the surge in violence. Why is it happening? Why are police tactics failing? And what can be done?
So, Simon, does this inquiry have any weight? Well, the Assembly has no power to compel the Mayor or the Met to do anything, but it can influence. And it's worth pointing out that this is the first investigation by an official body into what's happening in London right now. It's also worth remembering that when the Assembly investigated the 7-7 bombings of 2005, its conclusions about the shortcomings of the emergency services radios carried a lot of weight and led to changes. Now, we can certainly expect the Mayor and his senior advisers to be called to give evidence, so to police commanders, possibly the Met Commissioner, uh, Cressida Dick. We, we also understand that the uh, inquiry definitely wants to hear from the families of victims, but I'm told that they also want to broaden it to hear from other interested parties. So when they focus on social media, one person I understand who might be invited to contribute is Stormzy. All right, Simon Harris, thank you very much. A new tunnel is going to be built under the River Thames, the first crossing for cars in almost 30 years. The Silvertown Tunnel will link Greenwich to Silvertown in East London. Construction will start next year and could open in 2023 at a cost of £1 billion. But not everyone is as happy about it as our political correspondent Simon Harris reports. Crossing the Thames from Greenwich to Silvertown can be done if you're on foot. But now the cable car is to get a £1 billion big brother, a road tunnel closely following the same route. Today, the government gave the mayor permission to go ahead with the controversial project. The new tunnel would effectively act as an overflow for the heavily congested Blackwall Tunnel. But opponents claim it will simply generate more traffic and more pollution. The Silvertown Tunnel was first proposed by Boris Johnson and then adopted by Sadiq Khan when he took over as London mayor. Robert Gordon is a theatrical costume maker who lives close to where the tunnel will emerge in East London. I think it's going to have a huge impact. It's, it's going to lessen the quality of life. Um, it's going to make it more difficult for people to, to, to just have the right to breathe and the right to exist. Tackling traffic pollution has become something of a crusade for London's mayor. So environmental campaigners are astonished at his backing for a new road crossing. If he cares about air pollution, he's got to make some sort of stand against this road. Local people have fought, fought and won three times to stop this road. They don't want it. London doesn't need it, and the mayor should stand up for us. But a U-turn from City Hall seems unlikely. The mayor thinks the tunnel is essential for London's economy. This is great news for London. It will really boost the economy. Um, it will reduce the misery of trying to get across the river for hundreds of thousands of Londoners every year. And of course, it will improve the environment because we won't have to deal with the idling traffic and the pollution from it. It's almost 30 years since the Queen opened the last Thames road crossing, the bridge at Dartford. There are also plans for yet another tunnel downstream from here. The Silvertown Tunnel, confirmed today, is expected to open in 2023. And like the Dartford Crossing, motorists will have to pay a toll. Simon, there's been so much talk about this tunnel. Why is it only happening now? In part because major road schemes are always controversial and politicians are wary of upsetting voters. When Ken Livingstone was mayor, there was a proposal for an East London river crossing at Galleons Reach, but that was unpopular. Boris Johnson, when he was elected, scrapped it and came up with a Silvertown tunnel, but that's had a lot of criticism and opposition too, so it was referred to ministers to make the final decision. That's why it's taken so long. There's <laughs> been a long delay. OK, well, uh, who's going to pay for it then? The idea is to recover the cost of it from motorists by charging them to use the new tunnel. But if you apply tolls to the new tunnel and not the Blackpool Tunnel, what will happen? All the motorists will use the old tunnel, so the charges will also apply to the Blackpool Tunnel. OK, Simon, thanks very much.